Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a short video on algebra review number one examples. This algebra review is on solving linear equations and the directions are to solve for the variable expressing any answer that's not an integer as a mixed number. Before we get started, I'd like to just address what is a mixed number. Well, a mixed number is a number that's a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. So something like 1 and 3 fourths might be an example of a mixed number. Or maybe 3 and 5 eighths. And they can even be negative. Maybe negative 2 and 4 fifths. Okay, so as we're solving these example problems, if we get an answer that's not an integer, we're supposed to express it as a mixed number, just for practice. So in number 1, our objective is to solve for x. So to get x isolated, or to get x by itself, we need to get rid of that 2. And to undo plus 2, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. Now the 2 and the negative 2 are going to cancel out. So we're left with 5x is equal to 16. And now to get x completely isolated, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. The 5's will cancel out. And I'm left with x is equal to 16 fifths, which is not a mixed number. So I need to think about what that mixed number would be. So how many times does 5 fit into 16? Well, the answer to that is 3 with 1 left over. So the mixed number equivalent of 16 fifths is 3 and 1 fifth. Okay, let's move to number 2. The equation in number 2 says negative y plus 4 is equal to 10. So my objective is to get that y completely isolated. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4 from both sides. When I do that, 4 and negative 4 are going to cancel from the left side. And I'm going to be left with negative y is equal to 6. Many students feel that this problem is done, but our objective is not to solve for negative y, it's to solve for y. So we have to get rid of the negative. And I, what I want you to do is think of that as like negative 1. So if you even want to put the 1 there, go ahead. And what I need to do is divide both sides by negative 1. The negative 1's on the left will cancel, so we're left with an answer of y equals negative 6. Okay, let's skip to example 3 now. Example 3 says a divided by 3 minus 5 is equal to 1. So you have a few choices here, and I think the thing that might be alarming the most about this problem is the fact that there is this fraction a over 3. So one strategy with dealing with fractions is to multiply through by the least common denominator of any fraction that's given. Well, in this case, there's only one fraction given, and its denominator is 3. So from the start, if we multiply both sides of the equation through by 3, that's going to clear the fraction. So let's try that technique. I'll multiply the left and the right both by 3. Now when I multiply the left side by 3, it's going to result in having to use the distributive property. 3 times a over 3, and then 3 times negative 5. So 3 times a over 3 is just a. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And then of course, 1 times 3 is just 3. Now the next maneuver we're going to do is add 15 to both sides to get a completely by itself. The negative 15 and 15 will cancel, and we're left with an answer of a equals 18. Okay, let's move to our last example on this slide. The last example is 3c minus 8 equals 7c plus 13. And the thing that should strike you about this problem is that there are variables on both sides. So we want to get all the elements or all the terms that have a c to one side and all the terms that don't have a c to the other side. And my recommendation would be to just do this one step at a time. I find that if students try to do too many steps in one maneuver, then they make a careless error. So let's start by getting all of the numbers just to one side. And I'm going to start by adding 8 to both sides. In doing this, the negative 8 and the positive 8 are going to cancel out. So we're left with 3c equals 7c plus 21. My next step will be to subtract 7c from both sides. In doing this, the 7c and the negative 7c will cancel out. And now we're left with negative 4c is equal to 21. So I'm running out of space, so I'm going to just draw an arrow and continue up here where there's a little bit more room. So our last step was negative 4c is equal to 21. And I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 4 to get rid of that negative 4 and get c completely isolated. The negative 4s are going to cancel out, and I'm left with c equals negative 21 fourths. 
This is going to have to be converted into a mixed number. And I know the answer is going to be negative, so I'll start with that. Now, how many times does 4 fit into the number 21? Well, the answer is 5 with 1 left over. So the answer is 5 and 1 fourth. So we're going to finish our examples with two more problems. Please make sure that you're writing these down on the paper as I do them here. In number five, we're dealt with a bunch of parentheses, which is going to require use of the distributive property. So I find that some students um, like to draw arrows to really signify that they're going to be distributing. So on the left-hand side, we're going to be distributing one-third through the set of parentheses. So it's going to be one-third times 6x, and then one-third times 18. And once we move to the right-hand side, we're going to be distributing that negative through the 5x minus 4. Okay, so let's start, and we're going to work from left to right. One-third times 6x is 2x. One-third times 18 is 6. A 10 is just a 10. A negative 1 distributed into a 5x is negative 5x. And a negative 1 distributed into a negative 4 is positive 4. Now, we have like terms on the right-hand side. This 10 and 4 are both constants, so they can be combined. So I'm now going to write 2x plus 6 is equal to 14 minus 5x. And this should look like one of the problems from the other page. And my objective will be to get all the variables to one side and all the terms that don't have a variable to the other side. And I'll start by adding 5x to both sides. In doing this, the negative 5x and the 5x will cancel out. And we're left with 7x plus 6 is equal to 14. Now I'll subtract 6 from both sides. Well, the 6 and negative 6 will cancel out. And I'm left with 7x is equal to 8. And now I'll divide both sides by 7 to get the x completely isolated. So now x is equal to 8 sevenths, which can be converted into a mixed number as 1 and 1 seventh. Now let's move to our final example. This example looks really scary to a lot of students, all these fractions. It looks awful. The trick here is to multiply both sides through by the LCD of any denominator that you see. So I see a denominator of 2, of 3, another 3, and another 2. So if I'm dealing with 2's and 3's, the LCD, the least common denominator, is going to be 6. So what I'm going to do is multiply both the left and the right hand side by 6, which is going to get rid of those fractions in one single step. Well, in multiplying both sides by 6, I'm going to need to use the distributive property again. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these little arrows. 6 times 1 half x is 3x. 6 times 2 thirds is 12 thirds, or 4. Moving to the right hand side, 6 times 1 third x is 2x. And finally, 6 times negative 3 halves is negative 18 halves, or negative 9. Now my objective will be to get all the things with an x to one side and all the things without an x to the other side. And I'll start by subtracting 2x from both sides. Now, in doing this, the 2x and the negative 2x will cancel. And I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut here, but do this only if you're brave enough to do so. Now I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides in the same step. So the 4 and the negative 4 are going to cancel. And 3x minus 2x is x. And negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13. So here were six examples that will prepare you for algebra review number one, which is solving basic linear equations.